My name is Kristen Wynn, and I live in Grand Junction, Colorado, on the far western edge of the state, 26 miles from the Utah border. I'm here today to talk to you about the impacts of oil and gas development on the air quality and health of our residents in our community. Grand Junction has been at the center of much of the energy development in this country for many years, starting with the discovery of uranium in the 1940s. Our city was the site of a Superfund cleanup in the 1970s once it was discovered that radioactive mill tailings had been used as cheap fill material around schools, houses, businesses, and public buildings. We now know that exposing people to radioactive material is a dangerous practice and we wouldn't think of doing that today. When we know better, we can do better. I feel that the current development of oil and gas is very similar. We are learning more and more that exposing people to some of the chemicals that are used in extracting oil and gas, the poisoning of wells and water sources, and venting large amounts of methane into the atmosphere has serious consequences for our health and our environment. We need to take steps now to ensure that the development of these resources does not come at the expense of increases in asthma, respiratory problems, heart attacks, and strokes. Here's what it feels like to have an asthma attack. You wake up and it feels like an elephant is sitting on your chest. Each breath is a struggle and you wheeze and sometimes cough uncontrollably. I had serious asthma attacks when I was very young and growing up in Chicago, before the establishment of the EPA and the clean air standards. I missed 52 days of kindergarten back then. I thought I had outgrown my asthma in my 20s, but it never really leaves. What I and others my age have discovered is that as we age, our asthma symptoms come back, especially if we are exposed to air pollution. Grand Junction is located in a bowl surrounded by high mountains. We are subject to temperature inversions in the, inversions in the winter that trap pollutants in the cold air at the bottom of the valley while warm air settles over the top like closing the lid on a pot. Several years ago, the inversion in Grand Junction lasted for several months and all of my old asthma symptoms came back. I was coughing, wheezing, and experiencing difficulty breathing. Many other residents of the valley were experiencing the same thing, and we formed a group called Citizens for Clean Air. Citizens for Clean Air worked very hard to get the state of Colorado to adopt regulations on methane venting, flaring, and leaks. These regulations adopted in 2014 were the first in the nation and have become a standard for other states to follow. Although these regulations are in place in Colorado, none of the surrounding states regulate methane emissions. A strong EPA rule on methane would help protect all citizens of our country. Several months ago, I had an opportunity to tour oil and gas sites just north and west of Grand Junction near Vernal, Utah. We were with a representative from Earthworks who brought along a $100,000 FLIR camera, which can record methane emissions that are not visible to the human eye. We toured close to 15 sites, and the far majority were leaking methane. At one site, with two large condensate tanks, as the young man from Earthworks was filming, we heard a tremendous whooshing sound that continued for three and a half long minutes. The young man with the camera was yelling that he had never seen such a large release of methane, and I was wondering about the wisdom of being anywhere near this site. The footage that he captured with the FLIR camera is ready, readily available on the internet and right behind me. The scariest thing about this whole experience was that I have driven past these oil and gas operations without giving them much thought because I really couldn't see what I was being exposed to. And neither can anyone else. In my mind, it is unconscionable that we would continue to let this happen to our environment without taking steps to regulate these methane releases. Also, the strong rules in Colorado do not protect me and my neighbors from venting and leaks across the border in Utah, which is only 26 miles away, which is why we need strong federal standards. 
When we know better, we can do better. So please, let's not wait two more years to do better or even 90 days. Thank you.